Hi, I'm Congressman Bob Filner. I represent San Diego, California, but I also have the honor of representing you as the chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee. And in that role, we're doing, uh, by way of the Veterans Network, uh, our third legislative report on what's going on in Congress. And we're now in the 111th Congress, and uh, we're working very hard on an issue that has, uh, in fact, been with us for several decades, and that is how do we bring the electronic records that uh, you may have accumulated in the Department of Defense during your military service and match that with the, uh, uh, the medical record that you get as a veteran in the Veterans Administration? You would think uh, this was a, a fairly simple issue of bringing two electronic records together. Uh, it's a very important issue, by the way. It's a matter of life and death for some people. What happened to you on the battlefield, for example, is going to affect what kind of treatment you get in the Veterans Administration, and we got to know that. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, and I don't know if it's whether it's because two bureaucracies, uh, the Department of Defense and the Veterans Administration, are struggling over whose medical records should have the predominance, uh, we had not gotten very far until this new administration. And uh, what happened right after the appointment of the cabinet is that Secretary uh, Bob Gates, who's uh, the head of the Department of Defense and Secretary uh, and former General Eric Shinseki, who's Secretary of the Veterans Administration, decided they're going to meet once a week until this thing is done. I mean, so it's got the highest priority. It's got the highest level of uh, support. And uh, we're, we haven't had a report uh, based on those two meetings yet, uh, on those two individuals meeting every week. But uh, they're consulting with uh, some of the best uh, minds from Microsoft and uh, other, other software and uh, corporations to see how, how fast we can do this. Uh, conceptually, it should be an easy thing to do, but it has not been easy to melt. But we intend to do this job this year. As many of you know, the uh, top priority for most of the veterans organizations in our nation is what we have come to call forward funding or advanced funding. That is, over the past 20 years, only one year was the money for the VA actually approved by the Congress in time for the fiscal year to start. And that's just, you can't run a healthcare system with that unpredictability. You can't hire people, you can't plan on your, uh, on, on your equipment purchases or uh, anything. And sometimes uh, the money didn't arrive till five or six months after the budget year started. That is an insult, I think, to our nation's veterans. Uh, so in order to overcome that, the veterans groups have come up with this concept of funding a year in advance. That is, for example, this year we do our normal 2010 budget, but also the 2011 budget for the VA. So the VA knows what it's going to get in 2011. And then in 2010, we would do the 2012 budget. Uh, this would hopefully make funding, you know, predictable and, uh, and uh, so everybody can plan on what's going on. That, uh, uh, I introduced the bill that does that in the House. Senator Kaku, who's chairman of the Senate committee, has done it in the Senate. He has passed his bill through the Senate. I mean, I'm sorry, his bill through his committee, and it awaits Senate action, hopefully uh, next month in June. Uh, we are going to take that up into, in committee in June, and hopefully it'll get through the House soon thereafter. So we are on track uh, to institute forward funding. You know, most one of the most glaring uh, inequities that uh, have arisen in the in the Veterans Administration system is the way we have treated uh, Agent Orange claims uh, from our Vietnam veterans. Uh, we have, of course, not only it took two decades for the government to ever even admit that Agent Orange caused any difficulty, but we have set up a very bureaucratic process to determine what they call the presumption. Of, uh, of, of the fact that you were disabled because of uh, Agent Orange. Uh, it, it has a, a very limited number of uh, diseases that they have scientifically uh, determined to, to, uh, to be a result of Agent Orange. In addition, they have limited uh, benefits to those who they say have their, had their boots on the ground in Vietnam. That is, you had to have stepped foot in Vietnam to get any benefits. Well, all of you know, if you were in the blue waters off Vietnam, if you were in the blue skies above Vietnam, if you were in Laos or Cambodia, or even in Guam where you handled shipments of Agent Orange, 
this stuff gets you wherever you could have been in contact with it and that you didn't have to set foot in the, in, in the grounds of, uh, of Vietnam. Well, my bill, the Agent Orange Equity Act of 2009, uh, expands this, uh, this incredible, expands the, uh, uh, the eligibility to everybody who, who basically served in or around or could have handled Agent, uh, Vietnam or could have handled Agent Orange and makes that uh, eligibility again far wider. And we hope that uh, uh, this will be applied uh, quickly and uh, justly. We, uh, the bill has obviously uh, financial consequences because it will increase the amount of uh, benefits that are be paid, although again, I think we have to do this. So uh, uh, in the last Congress, the questions over the, the funding of it uh, prevented us from passing it. I hope because we started this bill early this year that uh, we have a full cycle of the congressional uh, workload to uh, try to pass this bill. It's, uh, it's absolutely necessary for justice for Vietnam vets. Many people have been fighting this issue for decades. It's time to bring that suffering of fighting a big bureaucracy to a halt and actually uh, say thank you to those of you who served in Vietnam but were who were exposed to this uh, incredible herbicide which causes a multitude of illnesses and diseases. You know, last Congress, uh, we were very proud to have passed uh, the uh, post 9-11 GI Bill for the 21st century. That is, what we try to do is replicate the benefit package that GIs had after World War II for both college and for home purchases and say to the newer, newest v, uh, vets coming from Iraq and Afghanistan to say thank you for your service. So. We have had GI bills ever since World War II, but the benefits have gone down and have not been very comprehensive. In World War II, we said, we're gonna cover the full cost of college. We're gonna buy down your you know, interest rates for homes. And over eight million veterans were able to get that education or buy homes and thus enter the middle class. We wanna to try to do the same thing uh, for today's heroes. So we passed, uh, as I said, the GI bill for the 21st century. It'll take effect August 1st. The first checks will be written for the fall term that's coming up, uh, and it will cover the full cost of going to a public university. Uh, there'll be uh, a, a book allowance also and a housing stipend to allow uh, the veteran to take full advantage. Uh, if you want to go to a private school, there are uh, proportional benefits to do that. We made a couple of real improvements over the original GI Bill. We know that the, our National Guard and Reserve units are doing half the fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, but they were did, never fully participated in the GI pro, uh, Bill program. Now they can. Uh, the active duty uh, assignments of those in the um, Guard and Reserve will be added up to uh, determine your full eligibility. Previously, uh, your longest tour was, was your, your sort of cap on how much benefits you would get. Now you add up all your terms of service. Uh, we have been particularly uh, rough on the bureaucracy that says you better have this done in time. All the you know, computer work that you need to do and all of the legal work you need to do, so the first checks will be out August 1st. We have been assured that will happen. We expect over a half million veterans to apply for these benefits, and uh, we expect to, uh, to see a new generation that, uh, of people educated and also uh, may have house purchases because of this new GI Bill. As a nation, we have to take uh, particular concern in our newest veterans who are fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we, we looked at, say, the GI Bill to try to give them that thank you. But we cannot forget the veterans from, our, from all our earlier conflicts, whether it's World War II or Korea or Vietnam or the Persian Gulf War. And in fact, in the Persian Gulf War, hundreds of thousands of young men and women came down with a set of symptoms which were very similar, uh, which people did not figure out what it was and called it Persian Gulf War illness. And it's been almost 20 years since that war, if you can believe it's been that long. And we still, we don't know what caused uh, Persian Gulf War illness, nor do we have a, a, a real settled on a, on a treatment uh, uh, protocol. Uh, this is very, very troubling that two decades have gone by and we don't have answers for veterans who have, uh, have uh, uh, symptoms of fatigue and uh, symptoms of, uh, 
of uh, flu-like things and tiredness and uh, muscular aches and pains that are very uh, debilitating. And we don't have an answer for it yet. Uh, I, I, I wish we would devote more resources to finding what's going on because we're talking about hundreds of thousands of our young men and women. Uh, so we don't have a satisfactory answer. I have tried to do my own investigations. I have talked to many uh, doctors and uh, those who understand these issues. Uh, I have come to the conclusion, and I want to just say, you know, this is not the official VA conclusion or uh, anything else, that uh, uh, I think these, th th this disease can be traced to some of the inoculations that we gave to uh, prevent diseases that they might contact uh, in, our, in, in a desert situation. I mean, for example, we knew because earlier we had given uh, Saddam Hussein weapons to fight the Iranians. So we knew he had, for example, anthrax. We knew he had some other biological weapons. So we wanted to inoculate our soldiers against that. But we didn't, I don't think, adequately develop them in time for that war. So we gave the soldiers perhaps a inoculation which uh, caused uh, injury rather than prevent uh, biological uh, sickness. Uh, that's my, that's my uh, own, the Bob Filner uh, interpretation. Uh, many doctors believe, uh, have given me uh, that as a hypothesis. It seems to fit many of the diseases and some of these doctors have come out based on that theory with a, a treatment, uh, a treatment uh, protocol which includes uh, well-known and cheap antibiotics but which the VA has dismissed as uh, not being uh, uh, useful. I have seen it be of use, <laughs> so uh, I don't quite understand if the VA doesn't understand it, and some doctors think they do, why they wouldn't at least try this uh, protocol treatment and, uh, and, and see uh, their, through their own studies whether it works. But uh, the, official, the official VA uh, line on this is we don't know what caused it, and we don't have a, a treatment. I think we got to uh, step up the research on that and open up our minds to different kinds of theories, even if it involved so-called friendly fire, which I, you know, we would put the inoculations under. I think people are afraid to face that possibility that we gave these soldiers uh, diseases which are still with them. But uh, we'll continue to look that uh, as Congress has an oversight uh, function. Uh, in the legislative process as, as we have a, an obligation and authority to see what the executive branch is doing and we, can t we will continue to uh, bear down on this until the, this, the answer uh, does come. I mean, it's clear from, uh, from uh, President Obama's new policies that we're going to have hundreds of thousands of new veterans, uh, I guess, flooding the system in the coming year uh, as we, as we uh, you know, remove troops out of Iraq, there's not going to be, uh, the, the numbers that go in Afghanistan will not be as great, so we will uh, have a great number of uh, veterans. I hope that this administration prepares in a way that the previous one did not. That is, we know what's coming. We know they're going to need more resources, especially for mental illness. Uh, we know something else. We had a recent hearing by, uh, on, on whether the VA is ready for women veterans. This war has, has, has had the highest number of, of, of women in combat and women veterans of any time in history. Uh, I mean, it's up to 15, uh, almost 20 percent in some units. Uh, the VA has not prepared for these women veterans. I mean, we've had, we had stories and testimony of women having to walk into a VA and feeling like they're going through a gauntlet of catcalls, for example. Uh, there's not very many women doctors in the system to uh, deal with gynecological and other uh, issues that uh, many of the women veterans would prefer to have a woman doctor. Uh, there's not even a sense of uh, respect. Uh, a young lady who lost her arm to an IE, uh, IED, when, uh, when coming to the doctor, the doctor just assumed that this woman could not have been involved in, in combat and lost an arm must have been like cancer or something. So there's this sort of cultural insensitivity to the new facts of women in, uh, in combat. So we have a long way to go to prepare. Uh, it's gonna cost money, but it's gonna cost, uh, I, I would hope, and I, uh, the secretary of the VA, who's doing a great job now, would, would put some people on this right now. How are we gonna have the mental health uh, 
resources? How are we going to have special uh, resources for our women vets? How are we going to make sure that uh, that the uh, that the isolation that comes after combat does not lead to suicide? Uh, that kind of those issues. So we've got a long way to go, but uh, we're going to press the, the the secretary to be prepared this time. As always, it's been a pleasure to. Uh, to talk about the recent legislation that we have uh, been uh, trying to uh, pass in Congress to work with the Veterans Network on informing uh, all of you veterans about what's going on. Uh, there may be some questions. I hope we can deal with them. But uh, we look forward to seeing you again for the next report uh, from the chairman of the Veterans Committee uh, on legislation in Congress.